you'll never be able to guess where I'm gonna pop up next. Aha! Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jacob Hack. I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. In this episode, we're gonna have a look at Koala Sampler, which is a sampler app that you can use to pretty much sample anything. It was really hot under the bed. So Koala Sampler is basically like having a pocket operator inside your iPhone. It really feels like working with a pocket operator. Sampler pocket operator at that. The interface and the way you use it is very straightforward and simple. When you want to sample something, you simply press down a pad and then you play the sound source and it gets recorded in there. Now you can use any type of USB class compliant sound interface. I've been using my Behringer UCA202 to sample with. I've also tested it with my Behringer UMC1820 and I've also tested it with uh, my uh, iRig Mic HD. So any type of sound interface with a USB connection that is class compliant can be used with Koala Sampler. Now, some people might wonder, does it only work with Behringer interfaces? And the answer is no, no, not at all. It's just that I have a lot of Behringer interfaces at home. And so these are the ones that I've tested with. As I said, any USB class compliant sound interface will work. Now, some of these sound interfaces might be delivered with a lightning to USB connection cable, like the IK multimedia range of sound interfaces. However, most sound interfaces come with a standard USB connection, and so you're gonna need one of these to actually connect your sound interface to your iDevice. Now you can of course use the internal microphone on your iDevice, your iPad or your iPhone and Koala will record audio from that. But if you're wondering if you can record audio from other apps, you know, internally from within your iDevice, then I did find a way of doing that by using AUM by Cumatica. So I basically just loaded up Koala Sampler inside an FX slot inside AUM. And then I loaded up another app in the input slot on the same channel. Oh, and if you have a headphone port on your iPad or your iPhone, then you can of course use an iOS compatible headphone set or a lavalier microphone. Now, I did some cool sampling where I was sampling an actual pocket operator into Koala Sampler, just to show you how quickly you can get something going with this awesome app. Now Koala comes with eight effects that you can use when you're recording your samples. You see, this is the thing. If you record something to a pad and you didn't use any effects for it, then you can't add any effects to it afterwards unless you resample that pad. So let's say you're recording something to a pad and you're doing it without any of the uh, FX activated. So what you're gonna end up with is that clean audio that you recorded. But then you say, I want some reverb on this. So what do you do? Well, the reverb effect is this thing here that looks like a rainbow. 
and you just tap on it to highlight it, make it go blue, and then it's activated. This means that the reverb effect is now activated for the input. And so anything we record now will have a reverb on it. And to resample this pad, what you do is you go to the input selector and you choose resample from app. And so now I only have to hit the pad that contains the sample I want to resample and then a pad I want to resample it to. Now what's nice is that the developer has even implemented a way where you can just resample a whole loop, a whole pattern and use it like that. Very neat, love the workflow with this thing. And hey, look at this. Need to delete something? Drag and drop in paper basket. Need to copy something? Drag and drop. Simple, love it. I won't be doing an in-depth where I show you absolutely everything. Why do I walk around as if I, I need to take a leak? It's got that little... By the way, I've had a few comments from people saying that they don't like it when I don't stay on topic. Take it all in. Take it all in. I did it all for you. Take a look up here in the upper right corner. Here we can see that we can make a new empty project. We can load a project, save a project. We can also record songs like internally in this thing and it will record the audio uh, basically of everything you do. You can export it. You have Ableton Link. It also has an import audio function and it supports AudioShare directly. So if you have a lot of samples stored inside AudioShare, you simply press that thing, go into AudioShare and load the uh, samples that you want. Now, the cool thing is that Koala Sampler has global effects, bit crushing, stuttering, gating, reverb, which makes it a very interesting tool to use for making stuff live. See how much I love Koala Sampler? It's really amazing. And you know what? The price for this thing, look at this. That's what you have to pay for Koala Sampler. Now, the app is very, very straightforward and easy to use. And as I have already said, I'm not going to go through every feature. But what I want to do mention is if you look down here, you can see that it says A, B, C and D. And so what you have is 16 pads within four banks. So you can have samples on up to 64 pads. Also, if we go to the sequencer page, then we can see that we have eight slots to actually record sequences in. And if we press the button here on the right, then we see that we have three more pages. So you can make up to 32 different sequences. And on top of that, each sequence can be up to 32 bars long. Now, I did discover a little glitch here because if I actually go to let's say 31 this doesn't work if i put it to 32 but if i put it at 31 and press double up it's gonna say 62 bars i'm not sure but i do think that this is a bug and so if the developer is seeing this then for the next update this might not work like this it might be fixed yeah just go get it. The link is down in the description together with links to the hardware I was using and the sound interfaces, the microphone, everything I'm talking about, it's always down there. Now I was sampling sounds from both the uh, Teenage Engineering pocket operator PO32 Tonic and also the uh, IK Multimedia Uno synth. And if you want to know more about those two units, then I do have two videos. One is a review of the PO32 and the other one is actually a comparison between the uh, IK Multimedia Uno synth and the Korg Volca bass. I've put links to both those videos down in the description, up in this card and also at the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. If you want to support me, then why not at least check out my music. You can find all the links to where my music is if you go to jakobhack.com slash music. You can also support me financially via Patreon, PayPal and... Um, 
Well, those are the options, basically. If you like this video, why not hit the like button because that really, really helps me out. And um, why not subscribe? And if you subscribe, press in the little bell thing so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. I, I move around a lot, I'm really sorry. I've, um, I've got ADHD and today is really, really bad because I've been sitting still for quite some time <sighs> doing some really tedious stuff that I didn't want to do, uh, but I had to do it because it's just work that needs to be done. You know, cleaning up the iPad, uh, getting rid of a lot of files, removing uh, a lot of data, just making space for new videos. Uh, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ah!